Coming up in today's video, we take a look at how I paint my British 14th Army Chindits. This tutorial will go through in detail how I layer my paints and what paints I use to achieve the finished model. I mixed up some of my techniques and tried out some new AK flesh paints, which some of you might find rather interesting. Let me know at the end of the video what you thought of this tutorial, and will you be joining me in showing the Pacific Theatre some love? Hi guys, welcome to my chin dip painting tutorial. So this painting tutorial will work for any of the um, Commonwealth or British troops or part of the 14th Army. It's all the same sort of uh, colours. So follow along with me and hopefully it will be of some use. Uh, so to start off with, we're going to be painting the jungle green. So I'll start with this gunship green from Vallejo. Um, and I'm going to be doing something a bit different than I normally do in all my other videos. I'm going to be uh, layering. So I'm going to be starting with this bright green. Um, and then I'm going to be um, mixing in uh, other colours to uh, just highlight, if you will, or make certain areas pop. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to start the webbing. So I'm going to be painting that in khaki. That's also a Vallejo paint. Um, try and use that dark uh, primer or that, on, that coat that you've put on before you've put any paint on uh, to show any of the sort of lines and that um, or any of the shaded areas. Once we're done with that we're going to then mix a 2 to 1 ratio of gunship green and Iraqi sand so it's two parts gunship green one part Iraqi sand. Now once you've finished this part you don't have to then do the next part which will be coming up in a moment you can move on this is sufficient uh, as you can see uh, in the video it's sort of starting to some of those areas on the uniform are starting to pop but I want to add a further highlight um, to this model so this is the part of layering that, I, that I'm doing so this is the second part. So once we've done that we want to then move on to the last part so again you can skip this step but um, for this part I've gone one to one ratio of gunship green and Iraqi sand I've just mixed it on my palette using an old brush um, and just starting to pick out areas it just means that the highlight doesn't stand out as much so if I've just gone straight to a one to one mix straight from, um, from the original green that we used that highlight is really going to stand out and um, sometimes that's really good in this scale but I wanted to try something a little different and um, hopefully you'll agree at the end that um, I think it actually looks a bit better once I've done that, I'm going to give the uh, webbing uh, undercoat of, um, sorry, a coat of Umbar wash, which is obviously a wash. Um, I went with uh, an old fine brush here, but I realized that this just wasn't doing what I needed to do, so I moved to a bigger brush. The reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to paint over it again. So similar to what we did with the green uh, uniform, uh, or the jungle green uniform, uh, I'm going to be painting back over this khaki so I can use that darker area to build up those nice bright colors. So for the hat, I'm going to be using English uniform. Um, there's not really much you can really leave with the hat in terms of that brown color to sort of add some definition. So, you know, use your imagination if you want to make a little groove or anything you can do. Um, but I just used English uniform here and I left just a, a little bit of that brown coming through at the um, at part in parts of the hat. It's a pretty nice color and um, it stands out relatively nicely. Now I'm going back over the khaki. So I mentioned that before, we've done the umbar wash and now we want to um, go back over what we painted, but leaving some of that darker khaki that's going to be there from that brown wash that we put on. Um, just so we start building up those layers of colors again and we're going to progressively go from dark to light. So anywhere that's going to be dark is going to be in the sort of bits of area that's not going to be getting sunlight, uh, maybe areas that have been worn, uh, anything like that. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. Also, um, make sure you're painting this part of the hat in khaki as well. So the rifle strap, uh, the webbing and part of the hat. Now to finish off uh, highlighting um, my webbing, I'm using Vallejo Stone Grey. So this is a bit more of like a, it's got a bit more of a whitey um, look to it. So it helps it pop, but it blends in really nicely. So it's not going to be a super strong highlight where it's going to stand out from a mile away. It's going to just sort of uh, give you that nice highlight that you want uh, without it being too strong, which is 
what you want in this scale, especially with 15mm miniatures. So remember to do all the areas that we spoke about previously and then once you've done that move on to uh, Vallejo Black. So this is going to be for any metallic uh, object, so the machine gun or the Thompson that this guy's carrying, his boots, uh, I believe they had a bayonet so I've just paint, painted the part of the bayonet that's um, shown as uh, black as well. And then we'll be moving on to a uh, highlight of that color later on. You can also use um, Vallejo German Grey, that's also a really good color for painting metallic objects. It's really up to you, but I chose black for this one. Um, I don't know why, I just felt like painting it black in all honesty. Uh, and that's what happens when you're painting. Sometimes you just go, you know what, I'm gonna use this color and you know, it's all personal taste. Now, um, my recipe for wood is has changed slightly. I've now moved on to Vallejo German Camo Medium Brown. So I put an initial base coat of, of that down. Uh, again, uh, it's hard to see in this video, but I'm making sure those details, um, I'm picking up those details with that brown, but I'm leaving that darker brown to show any grooves and that that the rifle may have. So just take your time here. The, the whole process um, of painting a miniature uh, should be enjoyable but also you should look back on it and think, ah, oh, I've done a really good job. So part of that is just taking your time um, and I can't emphasize that enough. Don't panic if you make a few mistakes, we can fix that up easily. Now I'm going over um, that German Camo Brown with Vallejo Flat Earth. The reason I'm doing that is exactly the same as what we've been talking about previously. I'm building up those to those really bright colors. So I'm starting with a darker color and now I'm working with flat earth. So that complements that German camo brown really nicely. It's got a bit more of an orange um, look to it, but it's not overpowering. And that's what you want. Okay, I keep mentioning that, I keep harping on about it, but I'm using layers here to, to build up to that final highlight. And then we've spoke about the layers that have been built up now we're putting on that final highlight which is orange brown so Vallejo orange brown obviously very um, bright and it's got a lot more orange than it does brown so you're only picking out small little details here you can put just a dot little blob on the top here and there um, and if you need references to what I did you can see uh, my photos at the end and, and how I sort of try and make that wood pop now uh, I'm going back over certain areas uh, of the model with Umbar Wash, so I'm, use, I'm going over the hat, um, I'm also going to go over the rifle and perhaps any areas of the webbing that I missed. I also forgot to mention when you're painting khaki, so we spoke about painting the, the webbing and the rifle strap, also the gaiters, anything like that, uh, make sure you're painting it in khaki and then follow the previous steps. So I'm putting that Umbar Wash over the rifle um, just to tone down uh, that that bright orange, but I'm watering that on by wash down when I'm doing that with the rifle. So the next color is uh, a, a dark citadel um, metallic color. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to move away from the gray. If you've watched my previous videos, I've used a, a different uh, color, so it's not metallic, it's light gray, but I really fancied painting something in a metallic color, so I've used this citadel paint um, and again just picking out the details. So on the rifle, I'm picking out um, the iron sight, the bolt, part of the, the nozzle, anything like that. Um, also the bayonet, whatever you can see that's metallic, just, just go with that. And then I do a very watered down uh, black wash. I use Vallejo Game Color black wash for that. And I just water it down and I just go over the metallic objects again, just using an old brush. Don't be afraid if you get a little bit on the wood, that's neither here nor there. You're not really going to be too concerned. You probably won't even notice it. Um, but yeah, just make sure you do that black wash. Now I'm highlighting the hat. So I'm using beige brown for that. Um, very subtle highlight. You, It's going to be hard to see, um, but when you're painting it and it's wet, you'll obviously notice it. And um, Once it's dry, it's not going to stand out as much, but that's cool. That's what I want. Um, that's what I was going for with this video. Now, I bought a flesh set from AK Interactive. So the base color is base flesh AK, uh, from AK. Um, and I wanted to try something a little different. My normal um, 
formula is on all my old videos if you want to see how I paint using Vallejo paints but this AK flesh set I can't recommend it enough I'll leave a link in the description um, but it's a really good set so I've decided to do something a little bit different uh, than I normally would by purchasing this set again just building up all those layers so I'm using this this flesh as the um, the main coat and then I'm gonna just slowly start building up that really bright uh, Caucasian sort of color so next I'm using light flesh so this is the second layer that I'm gonna be painting um, if you find this color a little bit brighter you can water the paint down a bit and just sort of manipulate it in don't just plop it on uh, where it will stand out super bright you can water it down a touch and and paint it in layers um, so some of that reddish uh, initial color uh, flesh color is coming through um, if you're interested in these models these are eureka miniature models i uh, did a video on it uh, last week actually I'm um, talking about the model and the quality of the models etc so if you're interested in that video I'll leave a link in the description um, if you're interested in their miniatures as well I really highly recommend them because they're pretty cool um, and very unique and then finally I'm using highlight, fl highlight flesh but um, I'm watering this down a touch so I'm not just going to um, put this on in a blob as we spoke about previously I'm gonna water it down and I'm just gonna run it around um, and only in areas that are gonna get direct sunlight so I'm using sort of doing the top of his arms where his thumbs coming over the rifle his fingertips and then I'll do um, his arm again uh, on the opposite side at the tops of his arm and, and his hand anywhere that's getting that direct sunlight and this is all part of that layering process that we well that I keep harping on about so I do apologize about that um, I just really want to emphasize the point here with that we want to get those colors built up we don't want to start with that color and then end um, with a really bright color we've just got the two where we're building it up here and then that is the end so we've painted the uh, miniature from Eureka and this is how I base them so if you're interested in how I base them I really want to do something funny here so if you're liking the jungle base that I've painted if I get 10 comments in my comment section asking for me to do a jungle base I will make sure that that is that video is made within the next fortnight all right guys so 10 comments asking for me to do the jungle base tutorial and I'll do it if not that'll be for an uh, later on in the new year but if you've enjoyed this please like and subscribe it really helps a lot um, and I'm growing relatively quickly which I'm really um, you know excited about and uh, any support that you guys can give me is fantastic so I really appreciate it guys and hopefully I will catch you at the next one